So once again, I stoke the ire of a fairly sizable chunk of the motorcycling community, so I feel the urge to give you another list to help us all calm down. Today I wanted to take a few minutes and talk to you about the 7 best comfort mods that you can make to your motorcycle, and these are going to be mods that you can make to any motorcycle, whether it's an 800 pound bagger, or your very first Ninja 250, because let's face it, at some point you're going to go out in your bike for longer than you meant to, and you're probably not going to want to feel like death is your only escape. Some of these are going to be completely universal and others are going to require bike specific parts or a little ingenuity to make them work, but it's nothing that you won't be able to accomplish with a few basic hand tools and 30 minutes in the garage. Some of these are going to be primo level dad mode modifications, but hey, if you want to live the chaotic life of a Jixer squid in comfort and style, then welcome! Kick off those flip flops and let's see what I've got for you. However, the easiest way to avoid full dad mode is to ditch that old school leather wallet. Not only does that thing look like something you got at a CVS, but it's also heavy and literally a pain in the ass to carry around. Believe me, I used to carry one of those things, and the only thing I can say about it is that I never had that panic moment where I wasn't sure if I put it back in my pocket or not. Then I discovered a better way to live. The Ridge makes the best wallet you can buy, and I'm not just saying that because Yam told me to. I use my Ridge wallet every day, and I absolutely love it. It's the perfect size for all my cards, and let's face it, no one carries cash anymore, but if you did, it's got a sturdy money clip. Be like me. Get a wallet you actually like. Click that link down below and use the code YAMMYNOOB for 10% off your order and free shipping. Now, the first motorcycle comfort mod has nothing to do with comfort directly, but it makes your motorcycle infinitely better, and it's a tail bag. Yes, there's some super fancy overpriced tail bags you can get that double as a backrest, but the truth is, ain't nobody gonna be spending $200 on a tail bag. Instead, just get any bag you see on the shelf at your local shop and strap it to the back of your bike. If you have some big sport tour that has luggage loops under the seat, you can use a couple of carabiners to make it an easy 30 second on off part that you can take with you whenever you get where you're going. A tail bag is the perfect way to get around having to wear a backpack on a motorcycle, which is the worst. After a couple minutes on the bike, the backpack starts to get heavy and uncomfortable and it hampers airflow out the back of your jacket. But with a big enough tail bag, you can cram everything you need in there and ride unencumbered by a sack of junk on your back. If you really wanted to, you could spend the coin and get yourself some panniers that are 100% dad mode, and most of them come with locks so you don't have to worry about people digging through your stuff. When I had my VFR, the tail bag was a game changer, and I don't see enough people using one. Trust me on this, you may look a little bit dorky, but you'll thank me later. Number two on today's list is a new seat. Yeah, no dust bite, real hard hitting stuff there. But seriously, a new seat will completely transform your motorcycle instantly. Everyone always says that a slip-on exhaust is the easiest way to make your motorcycle feel different, but for the same price, you can get a seat that wasn't designed out of cardboard and stuffed with mattress foam from the 19th century. There's a few places you can go for seats from bigger names like Corbin and Seat Concepts, which replace the entire seat, to smaller operations that simply replace the outer layer of vinyl and the foam for nicer padding and a leather topper. Not only is it a better place for you to rest your butt cheeks, but you'll be able to tailor your fit on the motorcycle better. You can get seats that move you closer to the ground and the handlebars if you're a shorter rider, and you can get taller seats if you're a bigger person on a smaller bike. On my personal motorcycle, the KTM 690 SMCR, the seat was an afterthought since it was based on a dirt bike, but for only a few hundred bucks, I can make the bike rideable for longer than 30 minutes at a time. If you want to be able to ride your motorcycle all day, you 100% need a new seat. Do yourself a favor on this one though, and spend some extra money. Like they always say, spend your money where you spend your time. Now the next comfort mod is one that you can get done on the cheap, and it's a new set of grips. If you've been riding your bike around for a long time and something about the way it rides just doesn't feel the same, maybe spend $20 on a fresh set of grips for your bike. You see, as you wear out the grips, they become harder and thinner, which means there's less to absorb the vibrations coming from the engine into the bars. This results in a tingly feeling in your fingers after hours on the bike. It's also just nicer to feel a well-made grip than an old worn out one, and it can make it easier for you to open the throttle. It's also a good opportunity to grease the inside of the throttle tube and your throttle cables if you have them. You can get some fancy ones that match your bike, but they're a wear part, so I wouldn't spend the money. If you want to go all out, you should get yourself some heated grips too, and depending on where you are, they can add months to your riding season. 
If you've never tried out heated grips, I highly recommend them. This is one of those parts you should check and see if you can get from the manufacturer, but if you can't, there's a ton of aftermarket choices that do a very good job. Since they tend to be a tad bit thicker, they eat up more vibrations, which is the whole goal anyway. Number four on today's list is a very simple one that's going to be a disappointment for those loud pipes save lives people, but one of the easiest comfort mods you can make to your motorcycles actually putting the exhaust baffle back in. I know, I know, this one is pure sacrilege, but think about it with me for a second. Most motorcycles nowadays actually do most of the dampening in the catalytic converter, and most aftermarket exhaust systems are designed to delete that. Then you're basically left with a straight pipe from the header's back and a little bit of muffling going on at the last 12 inches, if you're lucky. When we swapped out the exhaust on the street triple we gave away on yammynoob.co, click that link down below to figure out how you can win some bikes for free, we took the baffle out of the new Leo Vinci pipe, and it sounded great at idle, and not not too bad when you revved it, but when you were just cruising on it, it had a very loud and ever-present drone. A lot of people want the bike to be loud, but not only does it get annoying, it can actually be distracting. Not to mention that putting the baffle back in increases back pressure and low-end torque, which is what you want on a street bike anyway. And hey, the baffle's removable, so if you try it out and you don't like it, just pull it and it doesn't cost you a dime. The next way to make your ride more comfortable is with a taller set of handlebars. Now I've talked about this one before, but raising the handlebars on your bike is a super easy way to tailor your bike's fit to you. The stock handlebars are typically meant for a standard size human between 5'9 and 6'1, so if you're outside that range, the fit can be a little imprecise. Sure, you can pivot the stock bars around a little bit, but that's only a band-aid. If you really want your motorcycle to fit you, swapping the handlebar can help quite a lot. Going from the stock steel bar to a lighter, more flexible aluminum one will eat up some of the road vibrations, and it can be more flexible in a drop. And if you want to go crazy tailoring your fit, you can get handlebar risers that bolt into your triple tree and can add a few inches of height to the bars. These usually incorporate some rubber O-rings that eat out some of the vibrations in the bars, and it works works okay, but it's usually just an excuse to charge a few dollars extra. A few things to note here though. First, when you're buying your new handlebars, make sure that both the middle diameter of the bar and the end diameter fit the fixtures that you currently have on your motorcycle. Second, remember that most switch clusters out there have little plastic studs that go into holes in the handlebar to keep them from moving around mid-ride, so you'll need to drill out those holes in the new handlebar to make sure that everything fits up right. And lastly, if you change the height of your handlebar bars too dramatically, you could end up needing new throttle cables, or at the very least, you'll need to reset your free play in your existing cables. The next major comfort modification you can make to your ride has nothing to do with your bike, but rather your head. Spend a little extra money and buy yourself a really nice, high-quality helmet. When I started riding, I wore a Bell Revolver Evo, which was a great modular helmet and an awesome budget option, but it whistled like a sailor in the red light district. It was very noisy, and it caught a lot of wind in weird ways. When I did head checks at highway speeds, the visor used to pop open, which is very distracting while you're trying to merge. I upgraded to a Shoei RF1200 and have never looked back. Not only is it more comfortable, lighter, and aerodynamic, the neck roll is really tight and the removable chin curtain blocks out a significant amount of wind and road noise. Admittedly, it is a little warmer in the summer months, but the noise reduction and the comfort of a premium liner are well worth it. Now, it doesn't have to be a showy here. That's just my choice. There's a ton of great options out there. So do yourself a favor and go to your local gear shop and check a lot of them out. Wear them around the shop for about a half hour and see if they really fit on your head and if you actually like it or not. Helmets are one of those pieces of gear that you really can't buy online unless you're buying the same helmet you've had before. If you don't want to splurge for an expensive helmet, you can get some better earplugs. Now, you should be wearing earplugs anyway, but some of them work a lot better than others. I tend to steer away from the custom molded earplugs because they fall out mid-ride and tend to require a lot of effort to get the fit just right. Instead, I use foamies with an NRR rating of about 32 decibels or better. They fit great, block out a lot of noise, and they cost 10 cents a pair, so buy them by the hundred. The last major mod you can make is another piece of gear that you can add to your kit, and that's a water bladder. Either pop it in a little camelback backpack, or put it in your tail or tank bag so you can stay hydrated while you ride. Especially in the heat, it's very important to keep some fluids on you so you can stay focused. I always carry water on me while I ride, regardless of how long the ride is, because between the heat of the day and the heat of the bike, it only takes a few minutes to get too hot. 
While the manufacturer of most water bladders say never to fill it with ice, I've never had it burst when I fill the thing to the brim with a ton of ice, and it keeps the water cool for a lot longer. And honestly, the worst thing I can think of when I'm overheated is gulping down some 80 degree water. The real pro move here is to buy two. That way you can have one that you fill with Gatorade or some other sports drank so that you can get your electrolytes in while not permanently making the bag taste like diluted lemon lime. The key though is making sure you keep it clean. No one wants mold water. So my sweet little squid, this video is actually over, but lucky for you, click on this one right here. You can keep watching your sweet Papa Yam delivering you the motorcycle content you've come to know and love. Don't worry, I'll wait. I'll be here waiting for you. You're gonna click on that video.